Hi everybody, Rob here again at Power Learning Solutions. Today what I want to talk about is a new friend that I've met. Well, not really a new friend so much as a bit of a new nemesis or a new pain that I've discovered recently. And the reason I want to talk about Helpy now is because Helpy has just been mentioned by a group of my instructional design students who has started a whole thread in one of our forums about how annoying that they're finding this feature. Now, first of all, I'd like to start off by saying, you know, I love the Canvas Free for Teachers platform. It is an excellent LMS. It has lots of great features and it's a really good tool for uh, using for some really good user interfaces from an instructional design perspective and it has some really good built-in digital accessibility tools. Helpy, however, is a little bit of a pain that I've discovered that is not so friendly from an accessibility standpoint. Before I get into talking about Helpy though, I'm gonna talk about uh, a couple of other little things I like to point out to my students about how to make sure that you're not creating undue distractions for your students when you're setting up your pages in any learning management system. Now, I have got uh, a page set up here on my website, on the Power Learning Solutions site, where I've done a couple of things. And here's our friend Helpy, by the way, a little graphic that I've created uh, to, uh, to symbolize Helpy. But I've got a couple of things on here that uh, you should avoid doing when you're designing your pages and adding elements in for your students. One thing you should avoid doing to, uh, to help prevent distractions for your students is adding in links to external sites like this one here to my YouTube channel that are going to overwrite your content page. If it's an external link and you click on it and it overwrites the page, now you have taken your students away from your uh, from your content page. They don't know when they're finished doing whatever they need to do on your new page. They don't know how to get back to your to your site. Maybe they've clicked multiple links in here and it takes them a while to navigate back. You want to avoid that. This is a better way to do that. Just embed the link so that it opens on a new page altogether. Uh, if it's an internal page on your site or in your course, then yes, it's fine to have it overwrite your page. They're still in there in the, um, in the site. But if it's an external page, you want to avoid overwriting the page so that students can find their way back. Another thing you want to avoid doing, and this is something that became quite popular a few years ago, is to have images that open up in light boxes like this that uh, display on top of your content. I've got another example of that here open in another window. This is a course that I worked on in Moodle a little bit uh, of a while back. And I have uh, a couple of links in here that open up in pop-up windows. You can see it opens up this reading uh, in a pop-up window. Again, that's something that I did at the time before I knew better, and it's something that you should avoid doing. The problem with this is that when you have these pop-up windows, they take the focus away from the main screen. It's fine for, uh, for a lot of users who don't have visual impairments. I can see that I need to, uh, to click on the X to get out of this, or I can click in here to take my focus back. But if you are a visually impaired user, you're using a screen reader application, once your focus is on this window, it can be difficult for you to figure out that you need to, uh, to close this window or to find the switch to close this window to get back to your main page. So a few things like that uh, that you want to avoid doing. If you have a reading like this, it's a PDF file that's saved in this course and you want your students to read it, just tell the link to open up in a new tab so that they can easily find their way back to your main window. You want to, uh, to avoid taking their focus away. Now, speaking of grabbing students' focus or end users' focus and taking it away from essential elements, I'm gonna give you an example here of why Helpy can be so distracting for, uh, for your students. Now, Helpy is similar to um, to Clippy, the uh, an, that uh, 
built-in tool from Microsoft Office that everyone found annoying a couple of decades back and that Microsoft decided in their wisdom to get rid of. They famously actually uh, parodied Clippy uh, on one of the Star Trek animated series recently when they created the character of Badgie, and Badgie uh, ended up becoming uh, a very dangerous nemesis for the crew members. So why is Helpy so distracting? Well, I've got um, some images here that I'm working on. This one is a screenshot of the homepage of the Power Learning Solutions site. And on this screenshot here, I have overlaid Helpy uh, to be a contextual assistance tool that you, you click on Helpy and he'll give you help that you need. What you can see though is that Helpy actually lives on top of the page itself and he's blocking some important, um, important elements here on the page. I can't click the About Us link that's on this page because Helpy is in the way. Now, like I said before, I love the Canvas Learning Management System. It is a great, uh, a great platform, but they've introduced their own Helpy recently. And if I move my webcam out of the way here, you can see they've got their own little Helpy down here that provides Canvas support. The intention with this in the Free for Teachers platform, from what I gather, is to provide contextual support for your students right when they need it, right there on the page. It'll give you the, the help that you need for whatever is going on on the page. The problem with this is that when I have pages built into modules and they automatically put in the previous next buttons, Helpy here is now blocking my next button. He's, he's causing problems for my navigation. Now Canvas has gone in and they've uh, they've made a little bit of a workaround for this. You'll see that there's a couple of arrows here. If you grab on these, you can move their version of Helpy anywhere you want on the page. So you can uh, you can move it to where it's convenient and get it out of the way of your button. The problem is that as a teacher or as an instructional designer, I can't pre-configure this. It's automatically going to show up on the bottom down here every time you load your Canvas page, and you need to move it out of the way. Now, I tell my instructional design students, avoid having more than a page or so's worth of content on any given page. You want to avoid too much scrolling so that these navigation buttons are going to show up here without too much scrolling. So if you have um, Helpy down here, then it's automatically going to show up in the way of your buttons. Your students have to move it out of the way, which causes a real problem uh, communicating this to your students so that they know how to do this. They have to do it on every page. It's a bit of a nuisance for them. And once you've got this here, this is also residing on top of the page. So clicking on this takes your focus away from the main content page itself. It's easy enough to figure out, once you know that you can move this around, it's easy enough to figure out that you can do this using your mouse. Where this causes a real digital accessibility problem is that uh, if you're using a screen reader application, you need to lock your focus for your screen reader and your digital switch onto this. It takes it away from the page. It's difficult for visually impaired students to figure out how to get back. So just a little bit of a user interface tip there. Avoid having pop-up elements, avoid having shadow boxes or window boxes, and avoid adding things like this uh, using JavaScript or uh, CSS or anything like that that's going to add these floating elements above your pages if at all possible. Unfortunately, you can't avoid this with Canvas Free for Teachers. It's a system level element. As an instructor, as an instructional designer, you can't avoid having this on the page, but your students can move it. However, like I said, it is a digital accessibility issue that you need to be aware of when designing your courses.